I don't know. It's a lot of it makes sense to me. If the government was hiding a secret program, then Bob Lazar's story seems to check all those boxes. It's an amazing story. I love hearing about it. There's some really compelling parts about it. And, and then you talk to people in the UFO world that I respect and they're just like, it's a total hoax, total fake, you know, so stay away. Going off of the mainstream UAP discussions, like the one with Ryan Graves and David Fravor on, on very popular platforms, I, I have to ask you about what you think of the Bob Lazar story, because th th everything mm. with the reverse engineering of alien spacecraft, having a secret government facility, and th there's hours and hours and hours of discussion, and, and I had a... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I listened to it just like the David Fravor conversation. And, and David Fravor has much more straightforward credentials and qualifications. And then Bob Lazar's where it starts to get a little bit murky on where he actually went to school, what his qualifications are. So I'm curious for you when you listen to that conversation and when you hear Bob Lazar speak about his experiences, what, what are your thoughts on the Lazar story? I think I'm probably the same as you, you know, or, um, it's an amazing story. I love hearing about it. There's some really compelling parts about it. And, and then you talk to people in the UFO world that I respect and they're just like, it's total hoax, total fake, you know, stay away. I think that's like, I mean, if it is real, uh, then that's how I kind of would appear it being real is what, what he's explained, you know, everything he's explained if it's real, and I, I don't know, you know, um, then it, it seems to make sense. I think it's amazing. But probably the, one of the best parts of it that I like is the part where he explains in, in his video, you know, where he, he drives up in the Corvette. So awesome. My that's my favorite UFO video of all time. Yeah. Um, he explains he explains the universe, essentially. He talks about gravity B, gravity A, and he talks about the solar system makeups. And I really, really like this. It, it goes into my own theory um, where, again, we think we know all this stuff and we have just no clue what's going on in even the basic solar systems around us. Um, you know, we didn't even know there was a black hole. I think it's only 300 uh, light years away. You know, um, there's so much going on. So anyway, um, Bob, in, in, this, in this video, he explains about solar systems and that our solar system actually doesn't have that key element 115. It's that element that powered the spaceship. It's this element that he said would exist, and we hadn't found it yet back when he said it would exist, and then we found it, right? But you could say on the periodic table, okay, 13, 14, okay, we'll find 15, et cetera. Uh, either way, I thought it was uh, compelling. His argument is that we don't have those heavier elements naturally occurring in our solar system in a stable environment because our star is not big yeah. enough. So what he's suggesting, yeah, we have like a soul three, he said. Um, and then around us, you would have these other much bigger suns, bigger solar systems. And what it reminded me of was elements. So elements on the periodic table. If you might, you know, hydrogen, you have one nucleus and you have like one orbiting body. So my whole theory, uh, I explain it more on my channel, et cetera, is that Basically, uh, there's patterns to the universe, and solar systems seem very similar to a atomic systems, how they're built. You have the nucleus very in the center, and then you have these orbiting bodies. So in that case, that was kind of my favorite part of his, of his, um, I guess, uh, anecdotes, if you will, is that we're surrounded by all these different types of solar systems uh, that are similar to different types of elements. And in that sense, you could have these heavier elements sent into our uh, solar system. And that's where I was thinking Oumuamua. If you think of Oumuamua, yeah. it's that intergalactic uh, first interstellar meteor um, coming into our solar system. It seems very rare from all our astronomers saying it's this hugely rare uh, occurrence. But if you did have these other civilizations, for instance, and they were trying to help out or wanted to, I don't know, I guess propel future civilizations, they could send these objects like heavy Imagine just a whole big building of 115, you know, and they just fly it through solar systems. And whenever we are good enough or when we've reached a certain maturity, then we can capture these things. And so we would capture a Muamua, if you imagine. And now we have 115 and now we can use it 
we don't have to create it from natural state now we can use it and that would be some sort of i don't know process that evolves the solar systems etc so i don't know it's a lot of it makes sense to me if if it if the government was hiding a secret program then bob lazar's story seems to check all those boxes you know but he easily i guess he could have made a story to fill yeah I, I, i'm in a similar boat where I, I find it so compelling and i i'm 100 percent biased because i want to believe in cool shit of course i i hope that you know there's fucking alien spacecraft out there that we're trying to reverse engineer and that there are people that are selected to work on it and there's a secret government program that is that is something so exciting and compelling and i hear someone talk about it and i'm like fuck yeah like let's you know let's dive into this and then there are other things like when you dive a bit deeper and you go into Lazar's claims about going to MIT and Caltech and he says that they the the government wiped the digital records but then you know this is back in the you know 70s or 80s when everyone went to school and it's like there's also print records that everyone got a yearbook everyone got alumni newsletters I'm like you're telling me the government went into everyone's home and like cut out the square of his picture from all these yearbooks I'm like <laughs> There, th th there has to be something else here. M maybe his whole story isn't false, but th th and I don't know why. If everything else is true, he would feel the need to lie about his education because the, the what he's talking about is compelling enough. Yeah. You don't you don't need the the credentials to go behind it with the the education. Just like you know, say I'm a you know I consider myself a physicist, but I don't have the classical MIT training. That's fine. Like I could get behind that. But I just, I see the the lack of the credentials with the education and the shadiness of that. And I also hear other physicists talk about his story and say, you know, get me in the room with him. I, I've worked with physicists my whole life. I can tell who's a physicist and who's not. Just like, get me on a podcast with Bob Wazar and I'll tell you in five minutes whether the dude is legit or not. So I, 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 I those he's yeah. definitely a scientist i mean he has his his company i mean he's yeah he's definitely a nuclear scientist i know I mean. yeah he he uh, yeah. I, I, i'm not <laughs> questioning the his expertise and the things that he's he's built and and what has been publicly demonstrated i i just have my own hesitations around the the seeming education gaps or the, the the things that have been wiped that seem, you know, nearly impossible to wipe from the face of the earth. It's not that it's impossible, you know, maybe they do go to people's houses and they say like, give me your yearbook. And you're like, what? And they <laughs> they cut out the photo, but like it, yeah, yeah. That I, I, I'm, I'm kind of in a, a similar boat when it comes to wanting to, you know, finding certain aspects of it compelling and other things I need more, more foundation to be able to accept certain parameters of that story.